Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host, Ray Flowers. Just when we thought we were past it, we're sucked right back in. Another performance-enhancing drug scandal in Major League Baseball. Today, Edison Volquez of the Reds was suspended for 50 days for failing a performance-enhancing drug test. Now, he's come out and said it wasn't steroids, it wasn't anything to help him on the field, that he actually had gotten a drug while he was in the Dominican Republic to help him start a family with his wife. And here's a direct quote. As a result, I tested positive when I reported to spring training, although I understand and accept the responsibility for their mistakes, and I've chosen not to challenge my suspension. I want to assure everyone that this was an isolated incident involving an effort to treat a common medical issue. No reason at this point to doubt what he's saying. Uh, the bottom line, though, is he'll lose about $137,000 in salary. But there's an odd twist to this whole story, which is going to make it even worse and extend the story out as far as being in the news cycle. Even though he's on the disabled list right now coming back from Tommy John surgery, the PED suspension starts immediately. So in essence, what happens? What happens is he loses about a third of his salary because of the 50 game suspension, but he'll actually lose no time whatsoever on the ball field because his recovery from the Tommy John surgery will actually take longer than the 50 day suspension for the drug positive test. Major League Baseball needs to clean this up, needs to clean it up very soon. This is horrible. No sense at all. If a guy's injured and he's on the disabled list with a long-term injury, why wouldn't he take steroids or something like that if the suspension would allow, would be allowed to occur while he was on rehab from his injury? If it'll help you come back from the injury quicker, why not do it if you can afford the money that you'll lose in the deal? Again, Major League Baseball needs to cure this, need to fix this immediately. It's ridiculous to have a suspension occur at the same time a guy is out with an injury. The suspension obviously should only be in effect once the player is able to take the field not the case. Look for Volquez to come back some point in the second half of the season out of the bullpen to help the Reds if his arm re responds to everything that's gone on. Another five-game suspension has been withdrawn, and that was the one to Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee hit uh, Chris Snyder in, the, in spring training, was suspended five games for that. He appealed it. His trainer came in and said, look, he's had issues with his foot. He's had issues with his side, blah, blah, blah. Bottom line is, I guess the sob story worked with Major League Baseball, and Major League Baseball rescinded the five-game suspension with Lee. So when Lee's ready to go, Hopefully in the first week of May, he won't have to miss another start or sit out another five days. He'll be ready to go right into the starting rotation for the Mariners because once again, MLB has decided to rescind that five-game suspension. Lance Berkman is back from his knee injury. He'll be in the lineup tonight on Tuesday. Chris Johnson was sent to the disabled list with an intercostal issue in order to make room for Berkman. We don't actually know if there is an issue with Johnson or if this was just a move to get Berkman back on the squad. But Johnson will go on the deal for 15 days. He'll probably resume playing in AAA. Look for Berkman to help an Astros club that currently ranks last in the National League in batting average, on-base percentage, slugging percentage, and run scored. Look for him to help spur on a boost and a return to respectability for guys like Hunter Pence and Carlos Lee in that entire lineup there in Houston. Another player who's back and plays the Hawk, uh, first base, the opposite of the Hawk corner, is also banging at the Indians. He's back tonight as well from his back injury. Matt Laporta has been shifted to the outfield. Michael Brantley, as expected, was sent down to AAA to continue to play full-time. Look for Russell Brannion to play most, more often than not at first base there with the Indians and make another shot uh, at being a valuable member in AL leagues because of the power he brings. Mike Gonzalez is going to see Dr. James Andrews. A lot of concern there? Not really. It's more of just a checkup. Everyone still expects him to miss about three weeks with the shoulder issue. They don't anticipate any new information being discerned from that visit with Dr. Andrews. Just want to make sure that shoulder's healthy. No reason not to go and get a second opinion at this point. It's all we believe it is. We don't have any reason to panic. Just look for the report tomorrow to weigh any concerns you might have with Gonzalez's shoulder. Uh, there are concerns in Boston. Mike Cameron is back. Well, he's on the DL for the first time. He's out of the lineup for the second time of the season. He's already dealt with kidney stones. Now he's got an abdominal issue. They hope to have him back in two to three weeks. There have been reports that he might miss six, upwards of possibly eight weeks if he has to have surgery. At this point, they believe surgery won't be necessary. They're gonna run a few more tests to determine that the bottom line is Cameron's on the DL. Jacoby Ellsbury, continues to sit out as well with his issue with his side. Uh, don't know why the Red Sox didn't place him on the disabled list when it's, hurt, when it's occurred. He's already missed nine days. He's going to miss at least one more, probably a couple more at best. He'll probably end up missing about two weeks, which is just the time, obviously, that a 15-day deal still would have cost. Big news uh, for fantasy owners, he hasn't been able to be placed on the disabled list because the Red Sox haven't made that move. That's cost you dearly uh, by not allowing you to really to replace him on your, your, your roster. Doesn't look like at this point they're going to put him on the disabled list. He's at taking batting practice this afternoon at Fenway, kind of pushing himself a little bit harder today to see when he might be back. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. He might be back by the end of this week, though there still is a small chance he'd be placed on the disabled list. Though, again, if it was, it'd be retroactive, and he probably wouldn't miss more than about a week of action. Uh, Josh Reddick is called up, by the way, to fill the roster spot of Cameron. 
He's a youngster. He's got a fluid stroke. He's athletic. He's lean. Uh, doesn't necessarily have a lot of success at the big league level or at the AAA level, so he hasn't really excelled against top-level competition. But he's one of the probably the top five to seven prospects in the Red Sox organization and should fill a depth role with Jeremy Hermida really gaining in value in AL only leagues. He'll take on most of the playing time. Connor Jackson on the disabled list with a hamstring injury. Gerardo Perra will move into the starting lineup in his place. Perra doesn't have much speed or much power. Doesn't really profile very well in a mixed league, but he obviously has a lot of value in the only league for the next couple weeks when he's in the lineup. And finally, Madison Baumgartner of the Giants, throwing 94 miles an hour last year. Came up to the big leagues, was throwing 89. Came into spring this year, throwing 86. Concerns, worries. He said it's mechanical. People were worried it was an injury. Well, according to a report on MLB. ML, MILB, excuse me, dot com, last night Bumgarner was reaching in the 90s with this fastball, hit as high as 94 on the radar gun. Apparently, he's fixed that mechanical issue. He's still giving up 24 hits and 13 innings of work. Still has a lot to work on. Don't look for him to be back with the Giants at any point soon, but it's really good news to hear that mile per hour uh, total click back up. Apparently, it was an issue with mechanics and not an injury with Bumgarner. The, the future ace behind Kane and Lincecum of the Giants staff. Again, I'm Ray Flowers, BaseballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you all again soon on Around the Horn.